Viewer discretion is advised. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon journeys to Pomona, California and finds a fine dining restaurant that is anything but fine dining. I think we've hit rock bottom. The chef is fresh from the hood. Diamonds on my fish, good. Diamonds on my fish. I'm hot. And doesn't take criticism from anybody. You should know that already. Not even Gordon. I didn't hear not one person complain about him tonight. Did you? What? The owner has run out of money. I'm just surviving. The restaurant has run out of food. We don't have the salmon today. No sea bass. We don't have the kilo. The head waitress and the chef are at war. You pissed me off because you don't run that. Don't blame that on us. And the prep cook has sticky fingers. Did you ask anyone for it? No. So many problems. I need the ticket. I don't see the ticket. So few days. Service, please. This could be Gordon's biggest challenge yet. I'm about to walk right now. Tonight. Bring it. On Kitchen Nightmares. You are not an executive chef. Let's get that right. Pomona, California, a small middle-class town populated by aspiring artists, college students, and car enthusiasts. It's home to Leela's Restaurant, a fine dining restaurant only eight months old, yet it's days away from closing its doors. Hello. I'm the owner of a fine dining restaurant. <laughs> Leela shouldn't be in the downtown Pomona Center. There's a lot of homeless people. I don't believe that Leela's fits Pomona. Our restaurant here is crazy. I mean, Ricky is, he's always loud. Okay, all right, let's go, you know, hey! I'm hot. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Like you walk into a club, you know, and you just walk up there and just be like. Since it's my kitchen, my menu, you know, I can do that. I have a knife, Brian, get away from me. Dude. We clown each other and we have fun while we're in here. What the hell is in your ear, man? This like is 14 karat gold, baby. I mean, this, this is the real deal. <laughs> Buzz would like to stand in the kitchen and eat. I like to peck at the food all the time. Buzz! 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 You know, like one big happy family. Hey, I need my order now. All we do is read the ticket to put the food out. Tabitha, man. I just have to tell her, chill out. No, you're right back at her ass. I'm the one having to take this guy's order and telling him, oh, we don't have this and we don't have that. Don't blame that on us, because it ain't our fault. Ricky, I can't stand him. You don't know how to do it. That's why this restaurant's run waiting. The problem with Tabitha is how she talks to people. That orders the Man, shut up already. Everybody can hear Ricky and Tabitha yelling when they yell at each other. No, we don't got now. I think they're overwhelmed in here today. Yeah. It's really embarrassing, because your guests are like, what is going on back there? Like, I just wanted a salad. Like, it was slow, and then just getting slower and slower and slower. I'm definitely losing money right now. I took all my retirement money, everything I had saved, everything, and decided to open this restaurant. I have nothing left. I think we've hit rock bottom. I mean, we're like really going down, downhill. I just wanted to see if you'd have some money to lend me for the rent. Oh, gee. I owe my sister 60000 How much? 3700 I owe 64000 for the line of credit. I'm stressing, like, how I'm going to pay my bills and my rent and what I'm going to do, because I don't want to leave her, but I have bills I have to pay. Can't sleep at night, only because it's going through my mind, how can I fix it? I don't know what to do. So we're downtown Pomona. Uh, it's quiet, it's like a ghost town around here. This is supposed to be fine dining, but it's very, very quiet. And the place looks absolutely derelict inside. My god. I'm excited, I want to hear his accent. <laughs> oh, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Leah, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. There you are. Hi. My name's Beth and I'm your server. All I know about Chef Ramsay is he likes to yell a lot. I don't take anybody yelling at me, um, nobody. And the soup today is what, please? Tomato basil. Tomato basil. Fresh? Yes. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Menu spelt incorrectly all over the place. Are you ready to order? What is that there? Shivas. What is one? C-H-I-V-A-S. Shivas. Chives? Oh, chives. Can't even spell chive properly. 
OK, chives. Let's go with a small bowl of the tomato basil. OK. And I'd like to see the uh, nachos. We actually don't have the shrimp nachos today. We have a chicken nacho. So no shrimps today? No shrimps. So no shrimp cocktail either? OK. Um, I'd like the sign of the salmon. Uh, we don't have the salmon today. We don't have the salmon either? No. No. We have tuna, no? Uh, I'm not sure. No? OK. We don't have anything, and it's really just its irritating the out of me, because I hate to tell customers that we don't have anything. I'll go for the speciality of the house, the roasted um, rack of lamb. The rack of lamb? In a chocolate mint sauce, please. Thank you very much. You're very me. welcome. It's very disappointing when you sit down and start ordering, and then half the food's not available on the menu. OK, this is your order. Bring it. Everything you ordered, we don't have. He wanted the shrimp nachos, we don't have shrimp. He wanted the shrimp cocktail, we don't have shrimp. For us to sit there and have to tell customers, oh, we don't have this and we don't have that, it gets frustrating for me because we should have everything. Wow. Here you go. Love you. I'm not nervous at all. What, what do I need to be nervous for? You know? He's a man just like I am. Interesting. How is everything? It tastes like it's canned. Yeah. So it says homemade soup on the menu, and it's brought in. Can't the chef make tomato soup? Probably. I thought this was fine dining. So did I. So did I. <laughs> I'll wait for the next course. OK. Chicken nachos? Ooh, God, that was quick. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. Enjoy. God, who's that shouting? What, 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 what? Oh. Our executive chef, Ricky. Look at them diamonds on that. Diamonds on my fish, good. Diamonds on my fish. Diamonds on my fish, good. Diamonds on my fish. You have an executive chef in the house? Yes. And he buys in processed food? So what? Yes. Ah. Uh. Diamonds on my fish. Diamonds on my fish. We got diamonds on the fish. I'm good at my job. I love my recipe. I let my work speak for itself. Fine dining nachos. Something's not quite right. How is everything? Uh, yeah, really weird. Are they fresh nachos or are they bought in? Uh, the chef makes them fresh in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they were made fresh this morning, my darling. Ricky, when did you make the tortilla chips? Oh, uh, yesterday. I'm about to walk home right now. The nachos, like, it was the cheapest thing he's ever seen. What you do with nachos? You know what I mean? Well, they call them nachos. That's why it's an appetizer, you know? Oh, God. The rack of lamb with the chocolate mint sauce. There's fresh mint, chocolate syrup. I like it. I got to be really creative with it. Damn, that looks good. God, it's so quick. OK. Where's the lamb? No, no, not that. Where's the lamb? Ah. Uh... Look, my knife's bigger than my lamb. <laughs> To eat. May the Lord make us truly not vomit. It's going to be a long day. Could you ask the chef, is the lamb frozen? Yes. Oh, the lamb is frozen? Yes. He's just taking bites of stuff. Is this frozen? And I'm like, yeah. Is there any main course that's on the fine dining menu that's not frozen? Sad to say, but no. They're, everything is frozen. OK. Um, do you know what? I'll skip any further frozen food and maybe have a nice fresh dessert, please. OK. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything yet. Yeah, you know, he shot everything down pretty much, you know, but that's one person's opinion, you know? And he's entitled to it. So that's that. And what would you recommend for dessert? There you go. For the dessert, I would recommend the brownie a la mode. Brownie? The brownie a la, a la mode. mode. And he was like, Put your hand up and swear to God that it's a brownie that's made, homemade, from here. OK. All right, let's go with the brownie. OK. Wow. What a shame. When you first arrive and you're excited about coming to eat somewhere, and then half the menu missing, 90% of it frozen, and uh, chocolate mint sauce with bones of lamb. There was a big-ass pan in here full of brownies. I go in there, and there's no more homemade brownies. Buzzard! I don't know what happened to the brownies. I didn't do it. Don't ask the buzzard. I don't know. Does anybody know what happened to that big thing of brownies that were in there? When? A couple of days ago, why? They were just in there like three days ago. 
It irritates the living daylights out of me. We should have everything that is on our menu at all times, and we don't. I'm just, I'm gonna quit. Say that, don't even talk like that, man. You gonna let one just piss you off like that? No, you piss me off because you don't run this, man. We should have all this. No, it's on the What are you talking about? You coming back here asking me what's in this, what's in that? You should know the already. I know the no ask me. We no, don't we don't got now. I get up, blame it on me. You shut the up. What's going on? Coming up, Buzzard confuses fine dining. Did you ask anyone for it? No. For takeout. This is Buzzard's little picnic. And when Gordon steps into Ricky's space. I just tasted this. It tastes like powdered mashed potato. They are. Ricky goes on the attack. I didn't hear not one person complain about him tonight. Did you? What? That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. You coming back here asking me what's in this, what's in that? You should know the I already. Know the I know the ask me here? No, we don't got now. You shut the up. What's going on? She always want to blame people for other She should know the menu. Don't come back there asking me if you know what's in the kitchen. You know what's frozen, what's not. What the you got to ask me for? Right. Um, what was fine dining about my lunch there? What do you mean? OK, let's put it this way, then. I thought it was a pile of I was embarrassed for you. OK. You can't serve lamb with chocolate sauce. I mean, are you mad? There was no meat on the lamb. You gonna blame me for no meat on the lamb? That's just what we buy here, and that's what we serve. Ricky, it's on the menu at $27. Nobody else complained about it. There was no one else in the restaurant. I was bitching about the chocolate mint sauce on the lamb. People like that, believe it or not. They come in here and order it all the time. So I'm not going to pull it from our menu just because you don't like it. What was fresh on the menu? As far as not being frozen? As far as not being frozen, not being bought in? Everything has to be frozen. We just can't let stuff go bad, you know? Huh? Have you got any I got big Just because you come here and criticize my place, you think I'm going to give up? Nah. Whose I think are bigger? His or mine? Put it like this. We're we going to bump heads. I'm standing in front of a man that I feel that's got his name on his jacket, all the big showbiz embroidery, and yet we're serving frozen vegetables. As a chef, don't you feel embarrassed about what you're serving? No, I don't. Otherwise, I wouldn't serve it. Are you lazy? Take no way. After yesterday's fiasco at lunch, day two begins with Gordon inspecting executive chef Ricky's kitchen. God, a fridge that's not even cold. This is not a refrigeration unit. This is almost like an oven. All this meat is, is virtually rotting, dried, warm, congealed blood out of the bottom there. The smell is just vile. What is that? God, what the smell? I'm slowly but surely discovering my lunch. The bought-in tomato and basil soup that's finished with chili flakes. There's nothing freshly made in this fridge. <laughs> no. <laughs> it <laughs> stinks. The lack of cleanliness represents a lack of discipline, and Gordon knows he needs to send a strong message to the staff. We've got to clean. Ricky, I want the fridge, walls scrubbed, the floor done. Yeah, buckets behind you. Yeah, Tabitha, take care of the dining room. Gordon had us clean the dining room, freaking sweep like three times, mop, do all the windows, everything. With a concern that fine dining might not be right for this part of Pomona, while the staff cleans, Gordon hits the streets to check out the neighborhood. How are you? I'm real good. Good, good, good. What's the vibe like here, Pomona? It's young, vibrant, diverse. What about Leela's, the restaurant Leela's? Have you been there? I have not been there. What kind of food do you eat? Uh, the pizza joint right here. Uh -huh. What about fine dining? Usually not too fancy. No. Kind of on a budget. No. You keep the fancy stuff for your arms, right? Yeah. Huh? And where would you go out to eat? There's like some pretty good Mexican restaurants. But like, besides pizza. that, there isn't really anywhere that's like in our price range. With a better sense of what will work in this community, Gordon heads back to Leela's to check on the staff's assignment. Nice, 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 nice. Looks fantastic. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yes, clean. While Gordon is now happy with the cleanliness of the restaurant, he is still not comfortable with the relaxed atmosphere. That's not what your sister told me last night. Uh, <laughs> you did get you out that way. This is kind of like home, you know? Just kind of hang out, talk to everybody on the 
phone. Bro. I just lounge. I just shoved a big old bug in my mouth. <laughs> we have fun while we're in here. I mean, what's the use of having a job that you're not happy with? We haven't met yet, have we? Uh, no. I'm no. Awesome. Boy, pussy. It's I always taking and everything, that's right. You like to stand in the kitchen and eat, you know? You always catch him with something in his hand. I think you got a tape on him. The evening started out slowly, but a local theater has let out, and a wave of customers has now arrived at the restaurant. Go ahead and follow me, and I'll go ahead and seat you. All right, Ricky, yeah. where's my salmon that's supposed to be split? Don't be in such a hurry to do Holy smoke. It quickly becomes obvious to Gordon that this restaurant does not have a leader. Just two major opponents, Ricky in the kitchen and Tabitha in the front of the house. Salmon and a sea bass split. No sea bass. Huh? No sea bass. Man, how come you didn't tell me that when you seen the ticket? Because I didn't see the ticket. I'm like really frustrated with Ricky. Um, us not having everything. They've been sitting there for 15, 20 minutes when their food should be coming out any minute. I just found out that we have no sea bass. Oh, Is that what we both ordered? Yeah. Ricky doesn't have many of the food items that are on the menu, and what they do have is pre-packaged and overpriced for the town of Pomona. I just tasted this. It tastes like powdered mashed potato. They are. They, they taste all right. You put a little butter in them, whatever, put the sauce over them, they taste okay. Nobody's ever complained about them. I didn't even know that he was using instant potatoes. I think Ricky's a little lazy. Holy mackerel. Yeah, it's out of date. That? Yeah, look at the day. It's February 16th. What's the day today? Do not serve that cake. Don't serve it. Don't and serve story, don't yes? Serve it. Okay. Then, in a dinner service that's not exactly smooth sailing, some of the staff start abandoning ship. Yeah, I'm going home. We're still busy here. We're not. The, the rush is over with. Are we finished, or...? No, I'm just taking a break. Where, um... Where's Buzzard? Are they all gone? He's walking down the alley right now with his bag of goodies. That's the Buzzard, though, you know? He's always, always waiting to grab something with his damn claws. Buzzard and one of the cooks have walked off, but they are not empty-handed. Oh, 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 and what have you got in there? Got a sandwich from earlier, uh, some pasta that somebody ordered and they didn't want. <laughs> Lamb in there as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you don't know about it. Did you ask anyone for it? No. You need to go talk to her and let her know. I have no problem with that. Okay. Is, I'll says, come no, with you. Let's go. Trash can. We'll go together. We wonder why there's things missing after he's gone. This is Buzzard's little little picnic. Nice little sandwich there. Ham, cheese, mustard. Oh, nice pink salad. And main course, we're going to tackle some New Zealand lamb. No, you Mate. know where that came from. Stop laughing. Here we are with a restaurant that's financially screwed, and you're just helping yourself to wine and a four-course dinner. He takes little things every now and then, but I haven't seen him do something like that in a while. You're, 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 you're just talking out your yeah. yeah. No, you're not, not, not there, okay? You know this lady owns it. Right? Buzz it. Unbelievable. Gordon caught Buzzard taking food and wine from the restaurant, and Gordon is not happy. This lady owns it. Unbelievable. We were thinking that he was doing that, but I hadn't caught him in the act. And today, well, there it is. Almighty, guys. What are we doing here? Just our basics isn't even together as a team. I can't take responsibility for, for the whole restaurant failing. It's, you know, this is the team effort here. Why did you become a chef? Because I have a passion for food, that's why. A passion for what? Food. You're making powdered mashed potato. You talk about the mashed potato. I didn't hear not one person complain about them tonight. Did you? What? Did you? When Ricky and Gordon were going at it, I really wanted to just, like, tell Ricky to shut up. Where's your respect? What do you mean, where's my respect? For your professionalism. You are not an executive chef. Let's get that right. Don't look at me like that. You back a dog into a corner, eventually, you know what I'm saying, he's going to bite, you know? I'd rather change my career than make it out of powdered mash. Anything you'd like to say before we go home? I just hope everybody's attitude changes tomorrow so we can turn this restaurant around. If you still have attitudes, then um, there's going to have to be some changes.
It's day three, and Gordon is about to put his plan into action. But one of last night's problems has returned. Buzzer's here. Where is he? In the back. I hate to have to fire anybody. But then you get to the point where, you know, if I can't get them to change what they're doing or whatever, then I have to get rid of them. Can I see your eyes? Can you take your glasses off? Um, Buzzer, anything that's inside this restaurant belongs to Leela. Yeah? Right. Yeah, end of story. Nothing gets taken off this premises. If it was up to me, I'd fire Buzzard's ass. I get lots of people stealing from me, and I just have one discipline. Anyone steals from me is out. End of story. Because the message you send, they all see you doing it, they all do it. Anyway, Leela, you're the one who's going to make the decision. It's your yes. restaurant. Yeah. So, you know, I I'm sorry, but this is going to be it. All right? This is it. Buzzard ain't gonna be back here. He ain't gonna be buzzing around here. And he's truly a buzzard. Let me get my bag and my bag. Okay. Now that Buzzard has been let go, Gordon turns his attention back to the chefs. Okay, Ricky, let's go. Oh, boy. Okay, little taste test, yeah? Last night, for me, there wasn't enough tasting going on. There wasn't enough identification. So I'm going to pass you a little bit of food, and I want you to taste it, OK? And then I'm going to ask you what it is, OK? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah? Good. I, I didn't know what to expect when he blindfolded us. For the most part, I do taste my food. OK, good. So one of my favorite meats. Ricky, what was that? It was beef. Legs. Tastes like chicken. You're right, Ricky. You're wrong. That was chicken. What? How are you going to mistake chicken for beef? That just blew me out of the water. Ricky, what was that? I said it was pork. Pork. Lex, what was that? Tastes like New York beef. Yeah, Lex is New York strip. We already knew that Lex was going to get more because Ricky doesn't taste his food. Did you brush your teeth this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel. Right, blindfolds off. I expected you to get all of these right, and you didn't. Out of both of you, who is the better cook? I'm the better cook. I'm looking at him. Well, you certainly proved it on the taste test. Thank you. I am the better chef. Definitely, you know, without having to think about it. Ricky, you happy with that? No, not necessarily. Like saying he's a better chef than me. I know where my skills are at. I know what I can do. I know what I do in here on a daily basis, you know? I think we should have a switch round. Yes? Lena, I just found you a new head chef. <laughs> <laughs> Don't expect you to just bark at me and not expect me to say nothing back. Because that, that ain't going to happen. I don't want to hear from you. Coming up, at Leela's grand reopening, service gets derailed. It's like a train wreck. Not only the front of the house is fault. Don't blame that on us. And when one chef can't stand the heat, he gets out of the kitchen. What the hell am I doing here? Well, if you can't handle it, then leave. All right. It's a dinner service that will surprise you. Uh oh. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Day four. And to get ready for tonight's relaunch, Gordon moves to the next phase of his plan. But first, a surprise for the owner. You, my dear, yeah, for the last eight months, OK, have been taking care of everybody. Yes. Yeah? You're not doing that any longer. Good. I've arranged for you to go off somewhere really luxurious and to be taken care of. Oh. You're going off this afternoon oh. for a bit of a makeover, pampering. I'm looking forward to the uh, day off and not having to worry about this place and kind of relax a little bit. Hi, Hi. welcome to Savoy. I'm Hi. Sherry. I'm Leela. I hear you're in need of a pampering. Come yes. on over. While Leela gets her makeover, Gordon begins to change the menu from fine dining to contemporary casual, starting with a signature salad. I want you to think, both of you, yeah, of a Pomona salad. Pomona. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. Just over the next hour, put together, a Pomona salad. I want you to think of something exciting, and I'm telling you, this is how Caesar salad started. If bloody Caesar can do it, Pomona can do it. Use your imagination. Go through the fridge, look at the peppers, whether you grill them, soak them, okay. sweet and sour, barbecue, smoke them. I don't care. Give it some attitude. Well, the Pomona salad, he basically said, you know, 
try to get the feel of Pomona here. A little bit of salt in there. Right. Get away. Absolutely okay. tip top. Get the black beans onto there and the chicken onto there. This guy just opened up a $3 million restaurant. Of course, I'm going to try and get all the pointers I can from him. Like I'm back in school, you know? I felt like I was right back in the classroom, you know, scurrying around in the walk-in, looking for this, looking in the reaching. Oh, what can I put in this? You know what I mean? Right, wash your hands, uh, clear the bench, off legs, please. I want to see what you've done, both of you, yeah? We have a new Pomona salad. A salad that is in keeping with the area. It's fresh, it's new, it's vibrant. The Pomona salad is wonderful. I don't know how to describe the taste to it, but it just, it tastes really, really good. I walked them down the streets, saw Chinese food, Mexican food, a pizza era, and what no one has out there is a bloody good burger. And I'm gonna show you how to make a stunning, delicious burger. You know, I could have made a burger, but a burger to me is basic. Chopped beef, salt pepper, Dijon mustard, Worcester sauce, ketchup, funny chopped onions, three egg yolks, to bind it together. Really important to mix all that through, yeah? Yes. Really important. Tonight, we're going to do a special. Lila's Famous Burger, yes? Will be the best burger in Pomona. I definitely feel like our Lila's Famous Burger is really going to help us attract more people. Grill it nicely. This is perfect, this grill. Have a little taste. Season-wise, that's fine. Let's put the burger on as a special tonight. Chef Gordon, he was right when he said that we needed a burger. You can't get a burger around here, nowhere. Pomona needs a great burger, and tonight is going to get one. The recipe to the Lila's burger is top secret. I could tell you, but then I have to kill you. Armed with Lila's new hamburgers, a catering truck, and enthusiasm, Gordon and the staff hit the streets to promote the restaurant. You in a free burger? Sure. Sure? I, I love a free burger. What about you? I think that the word will get out on the street that we have a really juicy burger. You're welcome. Thank you. Free burger? Free burger. All right. So how was it? I said it. Nice. We like another one. I'm going to get another one. It's also going to get on the street that Chef Gordon made it. It's surprising how happy everybody is on the back of a really good, delicious, simple burger. The grub is <laughs> excellent. While the staff promotes the new burgers, Gordon's design team makes over the restaurant in anticipation of tonight's relaunch. We've got a new plan, a new menu, and a new interior. Leela's will be given a new look, yeah? A new, unintimidating, yeah, warm place. Yes? Yes. Speaking of new looks, Leela, where are you, my darling? <laughs> Here we are, look at you. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> look at you. Hello, good morning. Oh, my goodness. When I seen Leela come around the corner, it made me cry because she looks so much happier. Uh, how do you feel, my darling? Good. Yeah, you let me say, good. you look great. Thank you. Yes. You don't look like a lady who's carrying the world on her shoulders anymore. Yeah. <laughs> when they saw me, they said, oh, my god, you look so different. I said, yes, you have a new boss. Are you ready to see the yes. new hotspot in downtown Pomona? Yes. yes. OK, are you ready? Yeah. On the count of three. <laughs> One, two, two, three, go. When they opened up the doors, I was really shocked and surprised. It looks so much nicer, you know. It's warm, yes. Yeah. It's inviting. It's no longer stark and cold. You know, it's. I love it. You got the reception here. You got chairs. Sit down. What first caught my eye was the the red couch, the candles. It's like, why didn't we think of that? You know. It's in keeping with downtown Pomona. Oh my God! Oh, look at our station. <laughs> I think that Gordon did the right thing for our restaurant, just more positive energy from all of us. It's one hour before the opening, and Gordon has mainstreamed the menu. Gone are the fine dining efforts like chocolate lamb chops and soggy chicken nachos, and in their place are popular fare like Leela's famous burgers and the new Pomona salad. All that's left to do is get the personnel in order. We need a leader, we need a manager, and we need to install some form of discipline. Tabitha, manage the place, yeah? It means a lot to me that Gordon went with the whole idea of me becoming manager. That just shows me that he knows that I can do it. Lex, can I have you running the kitchen tonight? It's like it's the biggest compliment I've had all my life so far. Ricky, support it properly, yes? I think it's fair. I've been here since day one. 
busting my butt, you know what I mean? Let's get some identity and work together as a team. I'd rather have somebody like Lex who's passionate about what he does. I really don't think that Ricky's attitude will change. This restaurant needs to turn table tonight to stay open tomorrow. It's relaunch night, and Gordon has invited local artists, students, and car clubs to experience the new Leela's. And now, regardless of the rain, the restaurant is packed. Open the new Leela's. Let's go. All right. Up. Good luck, guys, yes? Yeah. yeah You're going to need it. Let's go. Good evening. How are you? Let's open the doors right now, man. we got a house full of people, man. When I looked outside and I saw this long line, I said, oh my god, are they going to be able to handle it? It's awesome. This is our new and improved menu. I'm pretty nervous about tonight because I know that it's going to be brand new Leela's. This is our new menu. The restaurant's menu has been totally revamped by Gordon to better suit the casual neighborhood. And tonight, for the first time, the man in charge of the kitchen is sous chef Lex. Lex is the chef tonight. You got it. Yes, it hurts. I don't care. Up. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry about it. I take responsibility. Take it like a man, pretty much. Uh, Lex. Yes. I want you calling out the orders tonight. Yes. Right. Yeah. Don't forget. Got it. I'm feeling really anxious, a little nervous, because I know it's, it's a big night for us. Two specials: bacon and cheese. Comes with bacon, Monterey Jack, and Swiss cheese. There you go. That sounds okay. fantastic. Okay. Let's go. Hey, they're in there. Hey, with the rain as well. Yeah. They're not hanging around. They're just coming straight in there. Yes. Here comes the mayor. And to further endear this restaurant to the community, Gordon has arranged for the mayor of Pomona to be here tonight. I want you to come in and sit down. We have a special table for you. Thank you. What table is the mayor sat on? 55. See where that lady is with the red? OK, Thank yes. OK, table. right. Are we ready to order? Ricky, don't f off outside on the phone. Keep it going, yes? Me, legs, Ricky. We, you know, we we don't want to mess up. What are you eating now? Every time I look at you, you're always eating. <laughs> this is work now, yes? I want everyone to get in work mode, yes? Yes, yes, yeah? yes. And for yourself? I'm going to try the uh, pot roast. I'm going to have the, the burger. The evening has started off well, with customers responding favorably to the new casual menu. Listen, Lex, first table, absolute critical. But the real hard work is about to hit the staff, and a little stage fright has set in. Where's the tickets for these chefs? Lex, where's the ticket gone for the tomato and basil soup? It's already been taken. No. I think it's been like 20 minutes. I think closer to 30. 30 minutes into service, and Leela's is off to a rocky start. Where's the first ticket at, Lex? No food has left the kitchen, and this grand reopening is off course. Hey, guys, we're falling behind. We've got to ramp up a little bit, yeah? Yeah? What's going next? Is that the Pomona salad there? It needs chicken. Yeah, super more Where's the yeah. chicken? Oh, come on, guys. Listen, Lex, yes. work together and send one table at a time. Okay. There's a lot of pressure <clears throat> working in a kitchen, so I thought we were going to go screw it all up. If this doesn't work, I don't know what's going to work. To be honest, the worst thing that could happen, probably Lex running the kitchen tonight. It's starting to become clear now. I don't think any of them are used to being busy, so that's why they're so fun. And the tuna sandwich. And when food finally does come out of the kitchen, not everyone at the table is getting their food at the same time. So I'll just eat this. Come on, Ricky. Yeah, not tonight. Come on, don't panic. I'm just trying to say, send it at the same time. That's all. Yeah, bacon is first on the Yeah, the bacon's not even. Yeah, you know, it's stone cold. It's not even crispy. We've got to. We've got to at least put it back on the grill for 30 seconds. Come on, guys. Meltdown. Yeah. You haven't any food I've whatsoever? Been here. I ordered four times already. Seems to be taking a little too long to get our salad. I'm irritated. I'm very, very irritated tonight. Everything is not going the way that it was supposed to go. For my chicken sandwich. God, oh my God. Chicken sandwich is going with the, uh, they just took, they just took the salad. They just took the salad. What's going on? Ricky and Lex, stop paying attention to their tickets. Right here. Oh, right dear, there, right dear. Dear. The wait staff begins to panic. Get on the computer and fix all that so we don't need the key anymore. How about that? Remember? Grabbing whatever food is up on the counter, regardless of which table it belongs to. I don't know what was going on in the kitchen. I don't even know where my order is. Like, I'm, I don't care. Famous burger? Table 11? What did you order? Oh, man. They put the wrong order in. It's supposed to go out with table 10. Caroline, you put in table 11 for this, and they're, they're saying it's not theirs. It's a salmon and a bake and a, a cheeseburger. It's like a, like a train wreck. 
Did you have the chicken soup? No, okay. Tonight was overwhelming. <laughs> Sorry. No, he doesn't. If I said it's coming, it's coming. I need a cappellini or shrimp. I, I just told you. I just told you it's coming right now. Don't ask him, because he don't know. One hour into dinner service, and Lex's inexperience begins to show. They're taking different food from different orders, and that's not helping us at all. You stand there and say nothing. I've been telling them. Who have you told? I told Ricky already, and we were trying to talk to them. Give me time with the police, yes? Right here. Okay. Lex was trying to say that the whole confusion was um, because of the front of the house. Ricky wanted to try to blame that everything's messed up right now because of the front of the house. Well, don't blame that on us. Because it ain't our fault. All we do is read the ticket to put the food out. I'm trying to stay on track with the orders, and they just keep yelling out, they need table 55, they need this table, they need that table. You know, people were trying to ask me 50 million things at one time. So it's it's a lot of chaos. It's it's a lot of pressure. I need a power up. You need it? She needs it. Where's my famous bacon and cheese? Hurry up, hurry up. Come on, you got to be fast, buddy. He freezes. He doesn't know what to do. I, I have to go back there and actually help tell him, OK, look, at this is what we need to do. Can somebody please answer me? Lex, Spencer, what's going on? Frustrated and completely overwhelmed. What the hell am I doing here? Lex leaves the kitchen to go cool off outside. Lex, come back there. Lex is panicking on us. Meanwhile, Leela is in the middle of the dining room fielding complaints. You, you're waiting for grilled salmon? Yeah. OK, let me go see what happened there. Where's Lex? They're waiting out there for two salmon. Everybody else got their food. In. I guess there was two up here that he put up here. I don't know what happened to him. The point is, they're not there. All right. And I need the two salmon. Where's Lex? Knowing how critical tonight's dinner service is, Leela finally becomes a boss. Get in there. There's two salmon. People waiting for the salmon. Why are you here? Course, don't talk to me like that. You'll be out of here. All right. There was something going on with Lex and um, the boss, Leela. Some words were exchanged because he wanted a break, and she yelled at him. I don't appreciate that kind of talk. I don't appreciate you talking to me this way. Well, I don't know. You answered me that way, OK? I asked you. you there's the two people waiting for the me well, What do you want? There's people out there. You guys are out here. I can't get a break for five minutes. I've been working for the past four hours straight. Everybody has. You're not the only one. Yeah, but you haven't been cooking. That's the same thing. You're not any harder than ours is. She's not working in the heat like I am. Well, if you can't handle it, then leave. She totally snapped, and I, I thought she was kidding. No, she was, she was serious. You know, I'm tired of these people not doing what they're supposed to do. They just get up and walk out whenever they feel like it, and I'm not going to deal with that anymore. Lex, what's going on? She's just really getting on my nerves. Like, I'm trying to take a five-minute break at least. You know, that's when I got upset. Like, what the hell? I've been working all night. We're not quitting, are you? What the hell am I doing here? No, yeah, okay. I can understand. I can feel the frustration. Yeah, tonight was a tough night. Hey, Lex. Get your ass back here, yes? He's really upset right now. Okay, you know? cool him down, yeah? Cool I'm, him I'm, down, I'm trying and, to, I'm and, trying and, to. And, and, and. Oh, my God. Damn. Lex out of the kitchen. All the pressure is on Ricky to get Leela's back under control. Where's my cream, man? Where's my cream? Where's my cream? Ricky. Yes, sir. Keep it going, yes? Yes, sir. If this slows down now, we're all screwed, yes? Yes, yes gotcha. I can still do it. When it's time, you know, when it's crunch time, you know, you just kick it out. Table 55 is for the mayor. How long for that table? VVIP. Give me five minutes on that one. Five minutes, please. Oh, hell. What is all this Can I get the ticket when you drop my order, please? Sure can. Many people are still waiting for food, including the mayor of Pomona, and the pressure in the kitchen is at its peak. Leave this burger. Where's it at? Is that for table one? Is that the ticket for table one? I'm busy right now. So we're just, you know, pretty much all gonna have to step our game up. You got veg in the pot right there. Give me the pot rolls. Let's move it. Let's move it. Let's move it. Thank you. Yeah. Give me two chicken soups and get this ticket up out of here. Bam. With Ricky back in control, food is flying out of the kitchen. Success. It was worth the wait. OK, thank you. Some people complain. They're like, when are we going to get our food? And then when they got their food, we're like, oh, we don't mind the wait. You know what? If I would embarrass myself, I'd lick that plate. <laughs> right, that's the mayor's table finished, yeah? yes? Hallelujah. You want a salad? This is the best burger I've ever had. Customers are thrilled with the food. It's delicious. And the mayor is proud to have this restaurant in Pomona. Pomona salad, I think we will declare that officially the meal for any Pomona day. $700. Yeah. You have to pay the electricity bill and $1,000 to break even. Yeah. Gotta go, yeah? Keep going. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. 
How's everything? Perfect. Great. The menu is great. I mean, people, they really like the food. After taking a little time to cool off, Lex returns to Leela's, not as head chef, but as Ricky's number two. Leela's burger, right here. Hey, dude, Sam. Come on, Rick, we can do this, Rick. Right here. Me and you, Rick. Lex took off, and then he came back. Just cover your ass. Ah, uh, you know it. And we did make a great turnaround. I got chicken ready. All right, cool. I got these two right here. OK, Tom. Give me a Pomona salad and give me a pot roast. I was proud to see Ricky really stepping foot and taking care of, you know, the situation. He definitely acted as the head chef. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. It looks like it's a whole new beginning, really, for the restaurant. Ricky, two seconds. After a dramatic comeback, Gordon was truly impressed with Ricky. We got off to a rocky start. Yeah. Yeah. And within 24 hours of being in this restaurant, I thought you we were going to bowl. Seriously, I thought you were going to throw in the towel. I just wanted to say, you did well tonight, huh? Thank you, sir. We butted heads at first, you know, but that was just, you know, ego, pride, pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Arrogance on my part. I just want to say, tonight, you proved me wrong, and I thought you did a good job. Thank you. And in amongst all the commotion in the dining room, you really held it together. You were solid, you were straight, and you didn't blow it. And I just wanted to say, well done, because it meant a lot. Feels Seriously. Good to be back, though. Feels good to be back. It does. For him to pull me aside, look at me man to man, and say, you know, you did a great job, you know, that made me feel really good. But now that you've opened the door, don't close it. Keep it cool. You know what the score is now. Yeah? Right. Don't stop. Yeah? Yes. During the rest of Gordon's stay, Ricky continues to improve. All right, OK, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Tabitha settled into her new role as manager. Losing your mind, take a deep breath and breathe. Leela continues to be more of a boss and more assertive with her staff. I want that calamari now. Customers raved about the food. Very good. And Leela's finally, for the first time in eight months, made some money. Never seen that before, <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm excited. Come back again. Oh, yes, we will. OK, all right, have a good night. Thank you. Right, let's confirm one thing, shall we? You won your first battle. Chef Gordon is an amazing dude. You fought to keep your jobs. It proved a point. Thank God he came and he helped us. You know, he turned it around. The new look of the restaurant, the new menu, everything's like way better. It was a buzz, a nice, loud buzz. The changes that he made here, they were great. OK, good night. I'm glad that he was here. He had a hand in, you know, in helping change the restaurant around. You know, I thank him for that. From this day forward, I'm going to remember everything he said. In spite of business picking up at the restaurant, Leela's debts were too large to overcome, and she was forced to close her doors. Next time, Gordon heads for an Italian restaurant in trouble. The young owner and his staff just want a party. So it takes forever for the food to get out of the kitchen. I need your specials now. And huge portions mean costs are out of control. Even the dog's got a serving there. But now the party's over. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? If Gordon can't get this cast of friends to grow up. I felt like I was eating my girl. This restaurant's going to be grounded for life. Next time on Kitchen Nightmares.